What's up guys, it's your boy Michigander man and today I'm here with my friend the traveling buddy. Traveling buddy. We, make sure you guys subscribe to the traveling buddy, go That's check right. his channel out. <laughs> We're both gonna have two different versions on this place, so make sure you guys check that out also. But we are here in Dearborn, Michigan at the Henry Ford Museum. Guys, I've never been here before. There's so many amazing things in here. I'm excited, I cannot wait to see. What's one of the exhibits we're gonna see, buddy? Oh, you're gonna see all kinds of things. You see the, the original Wiener Mobile is here. Uh, the original car that Henry Ford built that he tested you know back in the day uh, the bus the Rosa Parks uh, the was on, the actual bus that she got kicked off from that's in here it's all kinds of things and there's supposed to be an exhibit on the Muppets too so, it's gonna be so if you're if you're a big Jim Henson fan you guys are gonna love this let's go on an adventure this is gonna be fun stuff to see in this museum that I'm not going to be able to get everything on video so you definitely got to come down here and check this out for yourself there's a lot of amazing historical yes. site things in here I mean we're not going to be able to get to everything but I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can check this out 1950s Teens like the jukebox. Wow, that is so awesome. So right here is like the progression of TVs as they went through the years. How much they've changed, and kids nowadays wouldn't even know what these oh, no. were. What, what's that box? Yes. Oh, look it's at TV guide. The original TV guide. I don't know if it's original. TV guide. But these, if you notice, they, they're not on the wall. These are on the floor. Right. They're not flat either. They're not flat either. They've progressed over the years, and now, you know, they, my mom and dad had this one on the end. Man. That brings back memories. Look at this. Look at this. the original Air Jordans right there. Who had those? Game I had, Boy. I had an original Game, Game Boy. Boy. I had the original the Jordans. Original Apple God, look at that. Original. How much those would be worth about now? I had a Swatch watch. You guys remember those? Leave a message in the comments if you remember Swatch watches. I remember when they first came out. One of the original VCRs, top loader. I had that CD, the boss, born in the USA. Who remembers these Apple computers with the floppy disks? I remember that. This is unbelievable. That's what I'm looking at. Guys, right, right here is the last breath of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was Henry Ford's hero as well as his friend during Edison's final illness. This test tube was close to his bedside. Upon his death, it was sealed with paraffin, paraffin wax. Edison's son later sent his father's last breath to Henry Ford knowing their close relationship wow that is amazing this place is amazing guys like i said i'm not gonna be able to get everything in the video but check this northwest airlines plane right above me here look at this that is amazing this place is huge. 
There's so much history, so much to see here. I definitely got to come back to this place. And I want to thank my friend Buddy for suggesting yeah, that's it. That's right, this place is amazing. I mean, you come here to see all this stuff. I'm not a Ford fan, but I love this museum. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Ford did an amazing thing when he saved all these historic stuff, guys. This, I, would, I wish I could have met Henry Ford. I would, I would have loved to have a nice conversation and sit down and talk to him. Now tell me the difference between this drinking fountain and this drinking fountain. What is the difference exactly? There is no difference. We're all the same. I'm so glad I did not live back in those days. It's right in front of us, guys, is the actual assassination chair. Uh, when President Lincoln was killed at the Ford Theater. And if you look closely, you can see the blood stains. And the connection that Buddy and I have, we actually been to the gravesite where the person that captured uh, John Wilkes Booth is buried at. And I will link that video in this in the description so you guys can check that out. That is the actual assassination chair of President Abraham Lincoln. Oh my gosh. I thought for sure it was still in the Ford Theater, but no. The bus of Rosa Parks. Right here. December 1st, 1955, Rosa Park refused to give up her seat to a white man on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Her courageous act of protest started a fire in the hearts of African Americans everywhere. It became the spark that ignited the civil rights movement. And this is the actual bus that she did that. I'm from Grand Rapids. Okay, then shame on you for never being here before. Um, <laughs> hey, Rob. Hey, shame, guys. shame. <laughs> All right, so this is the Rosa Parks bus. How do we know that? Well, when she was arrested, they put the serial number of the bus, the 2857 that you see painted out here, on her arrest record. Also, one of the employees of a bus line knew it was a historical moment. So they recorded it in their records as well. So I'm gonna start off with the anatomy of a Southern bus. First 10 seats were always white only. That pole in behind was black only. If you were white, even if no one was sitting back there and you tried to sit back there, you would be arrested and fined as well. The seats in the middle, however, were up for grabs as long as the white section wasn't full. 
Um, and that's because 70 to 80% of the bus riders were black. They just made good financial sense. Right? So if you were black and you wanted to ride the bus, you'd have to get up and you'd put your money in the coin box. You'd have to get off the bus and go in the back door. You weren't allowed to walk through the white section, even if no one was in it. You couldn't sit in front of a white man next to a white person or across the aisle of a white person. So that day when she got on, she put her money in the till, did what she was supposed to, came in the back door. There was a black gentleman sitting at the window, two black ladies over here, so she sat down next to him. Was she legal? No. What question do you have to ask? Was the white section full? Exactly. No, it was not. Was it legal? Yes. Yeah. Until three stops later, okay? And that's when the white section filled up, leaving two white men standing. They just stepped up to that row and expected all four of them just to jump up and move back. 1955 was the civil rights picking up a head of steam. And uh, so according to Mrs. Parks, when the guys came up and stood there, they all just conveniently ignored them and looked down at their shoes until the bus driver turned around and said, if you know what's good for you, you'll move back. Three of them reluctantly did, and Mrs. Parks then just scooched herself over to the window seat, at which point James Blake, the bus driver, got up and told her if she did not get up and move, he'd call the police and have her arrested. For me, her response was priceless. She looked at him and said, you may do that, like she's given him permission. <laughs> so he did. So now it was very scary to be arrested for segregation violation because a lot of times your arrest was punctuated by getting roughed up if not a full-fledged beating. She's 41 years old, she's this petite tiny little thing. So she's sitting there going, no matter what they do to me, I will not fight back. Because her and her group were attending, uh, it's called the Highland of Folk School in Tennessee, uh, to learn how to peacefully protest. There was a gentleman there who's become a little famous since then as well, and that was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was 26 years old at the time, just freshly graduated with his PhD. So anyway, she was arrested, was in jail for two hours. Her family found her. They sent down the president of the NAACP plus a couple of civil rights attorneys. They bailed her out. This was a Thursday night. Over the weekend, they decided they were going to do a one-day boycott, which in itself was very brave because boycotting is illegal. So they did the one day boycott and it was so successful, they carried it on for another 381 days. And that's where the important bit happened. In that period, they brought a class action lawsuit with four other black ladies who were arrested for something similar and they were suing the state of Alabama to overturn the segregation laws or the Jim Crow laws. They won. However, the other attorneys appealed it to the United States Supreme Court where they won again. So on December 26, 1956, 381 days later, they announced to the country segregation was unconstitutional. That wasn't the end of it, like bam. It took about another 10, 15 years for them to get- What seat did she sit in? You're sitting. I'm sitting in the seat you're she was in? in seat, oh, wow. oh, wow. Rob. So this is the Rosa Parks seat. Yes, it is. Wow. So before we got it, uh, it was auctioned off in 75. A farmer bought two of them. He used one for a tool shed. This one he used for a chicken coop. Wow. He knew what he had. They were not sentimental about it at all. Wow. But when he passed away, the family oh thought gosh. it might be worth some money. So they contacted an online auction house that verified its provenance and indeed wow. confirmed it is the Parks bus. And uh, we have the Smithsonian at $494,000. And they took another $300,000 to get it in the shape. Mrs. Parks was able to come and see it in 2002, so she realized we had her bus. Nice. That's amazing. Any questions? Well, do they have the picture of her when she sat in here? Or, or she did they, not sit here. She, she did not get up in the bus. She was wheelchair bound. Oh, at the time. That's uh, that was just two, year, three years before she passed away at 93. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. If you don't have any more questions, can we ask you to ask it in the rear? And enjoy the rest of your visit. Thank you. The extra seat where Rosa Parks sat. Rosa Parks sat right here where I was sitting at.
Real quick? Yeah. 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 This is the car that uh, President JFK was assassinated in. JFK's death car. This is the death car. Death. And this is right where he was sitting when he was assassinated. And his wife was sitting right next to him. They, they put a, a roof on it because it didn't have a roof. It was a convertible. You can see where they did that at. That's crazy. There's him sitting in the actual car. Lyndon B. Johnson was in the front seat. Oh my God, that is crazy. It's an original McDonald's sign, an a and root beer sign. Oh my God. That is, that is me right here, 1956 Chevy. Wow. The 1960 McDonald's sign. Hey buddy, I told you the self-driving cars, they are coming. No. They're coming, buddy. No, no. There's one right in front that of us. That thing ain't driving me nowhere. <laughs> we got cameras right on the front. No. Self-driving vehicles. What? You want to try that? Look at it. Uh, yeah. Come on, Rob. Look at it. She can do it. You can do it. I definitely do not want to be no wing oh, walker. Oh, look at it. Did you never let that woman chew you up? Yes. Oh, tell them, uh, <laughs> No, I think I will uh, keep my keep my wings on the ground. I definitely do not want to uh, experience that. <laughs> definitely do not want to be a wing walker. This place is amazing, guys. There's not a lot. I was able to show you cars. There's tons of planes, things like this to see. You come right in here, you can be a wing walker. Buddy is telling me he wants me to be a wing walker. I, I am not a wing walker. He's sick. Yeah, you're on the wing. This is about the closest I'd want to be a wing walker, right here. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There's just no way. No way. No, no, uh, no, no. You can do that. No, Wait, no, look no. Look at that no. woman. Look at that woman up on there. She's doing it. That is not me. Definitely, definitely not going to say this name. If you guys can pronounce it, because I would definitely murder it and it would sound like a really nasty, naughty cuss word. But this is the flyer. It's, this is it. Now Rob, you said you wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this. Uh-uh. That's she over nice, though. No, that's okay. Not half a minute. No. Look at these guys. My baloney 
has a first name, it's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name, it's M-E-Y-E-R. So if you ask me again, that's why I'll say, cause Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-G-N-A. If I did that wrong, don't murder me in the comments. This is the original Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. I've actually been in one of these and I will link the uh, video. You've been in one of the newer versions. Be below. I was actually in one of the newer versions that they uh, travel around the country with. The original Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. Wow. It was actually launched in 1936. Rings. There they are. A whistle, the Oscar Mayer whistle. Rings you could get. That is so cool. Launched in 1936. And here's a autographed. Little Oscar the chef. The mascot. Little Oscar. That's where the gas tank is. I would love to drive around the country in one of these things. That is awesome. Here we go. Let you guys read that. Pause the video. Here we got Kermit the Frog. We use the crosswalk. It's safer. Hold it! Why don't you cross here? You shouldn't run out between parked cars like you just did. Baloney, watch this. Here I go. There he goes. Oh, wow. Man, this is awesome. Billy and Sue puppets. Um, guys, remember, I remember Billy and Sue. Frank Oz performing with them. There's Frank Frank Oz performing with Billy and Sue. It isn't fair for him to steal the glory. We're the ones who really know the marathon story. Who knows better than we do about our feeling of pride? Cause we've got marathon gasoline surging inside. How many of you guys remember these? Oh my god, look at that. The Pitchman Pump Pocket Pup. Pitchman Pump Pup Puppets. 1963. Right here we have the 
beautiful day puppet. 1966. So cool. Ralph Toy Puppet. This is a toy puppet of Ralph the Dog. From Ideal Toys in 1966, Ideal Toys created the toy versions of the Kermit Ralph puppets, the first licensed merchandise of Hens char Henson's characters. Henson decided early in his career to license rather than sell the rights to his creations. This allowed him to maintain the integrity of the puppet characters and also provide financially beneficial to his company. I'm ready. Shoot. Anybody else? Oh my gosh. The Wilkins Puppet from 1979. And the pop camera for prop camera from 1961. And the Watkins puppet from 1981. Oh my gosh. Sesame Street. We have the, the Muppet character book. I had some of these as a kid. I actually remember having that that game there. Oh wow. I actually had that book with Grover on it. This is awesome. Oh how cool. So maybe you build up your own Muppet. That is so awesome. Bert and Ernie. back so many memories. Wow. Look at this. The Ringling Brothers Circus set from Worm Puppets. That is amazing. Look at we there's Grover. Oh my gosh. Where is Grover? Look at nineteen seventies Grover puppet. Oh my 
wow, wow, wow. Now, right here, guys, this, this is a uh, wow. childhood dream come true to see the actual puppets of Jim Henson. I am in awe. This is my whole childhood, guys, right here. This is part of my childhood. I mean, Sesame Street. Bert and Ernie, Kermit the Frog, and the one and only, the Count. What is the Sesame Street number of the day? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, let's count the bets and find... I'm right in front of the count. Oh wow. That is unbelievable. No, 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 Beaker in the dock. Dr. Bunsen and Beaker. Oh my God. Wow. Oh my god. That is so amazing. Oh my gosh. Here's an actual uh, design sketch for Beaker the Puppet when they were designing him. This is from, this is from the family of Jim, Jim Henson. So that's a drawing that Jim Henson actually drew. We actually have Scooter. Wow, there is actual Scooter here. Actual scooter. Wow. All right, here is Jim Henson as an actual puppet. Jim Henson puppet. The Frank Oz puppet. And the Jerry Nielsen puppet.
Here's Miss Piggy's gloves. The pug, the gloves that Miss Piggy actually wore. Look at, there's these two. And these are her sketches. Here's some sketches of their actual first uh, mix, Miss Piggy. The actual, the Muppet Babies. Miss Piggy, Muppet Baby, Photo Puppet, and Fozzie Bear. And they're actually in the movie, The Muppets Take Manhattan. So there's actual puppets from the uh, movie Dark Crystal. Wow. Uh, detail. That looks so realistic. Who remembers Fraggle Rock? I used to watch this as a kid. I loved Fraggle Rock. Here's two of the original puppets from the TV show. 1983 that show came out. Wow. That's crazy. Fraggle Rock. That came out in 1983. Look at this. Look at this. What does this remind you? Does this remind you of two people? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rob? I don't know, oh, buddy. I think. Meep, 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 meep. Oh, Beaker. Yeah. yeah. Amy. Beaker. Does that remind you of somebody, Amy? Look at it, look at it. So, yeah, get over some up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, at least they're not bratty Twinkies at all. None. No. Nope. If you guys like seeing videos like this, make sure you hit that share, like, and subscribe for more guys so I can keep doing amazing videos just like this one where we can go exploring and see some awesome awesome stuff guys. What'd you think buddy? Oh this place is awesome man. Right? There's, there's a Henry Ford Museum is awesome as it is but to see the, the Muppets, Jim Henson stuff, oh, took me back to my childhood. I grew up with these things. Yeah, but you need to get down here to Henry Ford and check this yeah. place out. This place is incredible. The video does not do you justice. You gotta come down here and check out the uh, Muppet exhibit down here at the Henry Ford Museum, guys. Until the next adventure, I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.